so uh, in the last class uh, we have seen till that static method okay then uh, today we'll continue with this adding methods uh, dynamically So what it is saying, uh, Python allows us to add methods uh, dy dynamically to a class using the syntax class name. So for example, I will show you one program. Uh, okay, so here you can see so class name is a student so in that case if you see so class name for example a student or we have seen some uh, classes we formed like uh, in the beginning we had person then my date okay and uh, this is class name is a student okay so what here we are doing just you understand first this program so class is a student max marks is assigned 500 uh, def this init is a constructor of the object of the class so self with variable name roll number marks so self dot name is name self dot roll number is roll number and self dot marks is marks so we are defining a function percentage uh, and the parameter here is the object of the class self so percentage usually the definition is uh, marks of a student so self dot marks is marks of a student upon a uh, student total marks okay so max mark, a student dot max marks you can check here because we have defined max marks here in the inside that class that's why we have taken like that student dot max marks okay and uh, uh, we have converted into float in 200 okay to convert into percent this is percent and returning percent so this function will return percent of the marks obtained okay out of 500 and uh, result we are defining a function result and the here parameter is object of the class then we are returning pass as a string form if self dot percentage this is more than 40 so here what we are doing self dot percentage so we are uh, associating this function percentage with that object of the class okay so self dot percentage so we are uh, using that function okay we are adding that method function or that function per percentage sorry so we are adding that function or method percentage with the object of the class okay self so if self dot percentage is more than 40 so self dot percent this was returning what percent so if a percent of the student is more than 40 so student got put more than 40 percent marks or equal to then uh, it will return pass otherwise it will return fail okay so S1, the object we have taken, student is a class. So here, S1 is the object and the name, this variable name is here, a uh, uh, roll number is uh, 47 and marks is 450, okay? And now what we are doing, printing S1 dot percentage, okay? So S1 dot percentage. So we are just uh, calling function percentage, so S1 is the object. So S1 dot percentage, we are adding that method percent to the object or class. And uh, this S1 dot result. So when we run this program, so it is printing what? Uh, first print returns 90. So 90%, so max is 450 out of 500. So max is uh, 90% and S1 dot result. So result was returning either pass or fail. So marks is 90%, that's why pass. Suppose I change this marks to uh, 100, okay, to 100. So now uh, we'll run this. So here uh, the percentage is 20 and fail, okay, returning fail. So this is a class of student and we had two functions percentage. So here only one parameter we have, okay, self and uh, one self, yeah. So not name, roll number, marks. But here we are associating that percentage with the object. 
so uh, thus way we have so this is example corresponding to this theory only so python allows us to add methods dynamically to the class using the syntax class name so like class uh, here it was student student dot new method so like percentage you say so student dot percentage is equal to percentage like that so if we were to associate a method with a particular instance so if we were to associate a method means function uh, with a particular instance instance is object of a class so we need to import the function method type so this is the uh, function method type okay from the module type so type is a module you can write import types okay and function is method type so it has two uh, parameters so here it is there so subsequently we use the following syntax to add a method to an instance of the class so instance like uh, it was supposed p p1 so we have taken p1 in the last program so we may write sorry s1 you no know, s1 we have written the s1 s1 dot uh, you can write result so result suppose you want to use your result so s1 dot result is equal to uh, this you have to write this is a keyword method type is a keyword so method type then a uh, function result comma instance is s1 so you may write like that okay so this uh, this way you can add a function or a method to a class so here uh, like we may write so here uh, you can see here so we may write like we have removed i think so this way you can try from types uh, method my type so here you can write there so i have not used that way but uh, if you want you one of the ways so this program is given in the book so you can see this uh, this is program that i have done so we, you may write here like uh, uh, like here i written percentage uh, student dot percentage percentage i have shown you this last time right this or this yeah this we have seen so it was 450 then 90 and then once i have taken it 100 uh, this was 100 i think so this 20 percent fail okay same thing was here so here you may associate it like that student dot percentage percentage student or result is result like that you can write mainly here is we are calling that function percentage with the object s1 okay so this is the way so this way you can do next is what uh, next is composition so composition you know in sense of mathematics what was composition so when you operate one function over other function like f o g you know f of g of x so uh, uh, in similar way here uh, composition is also same meaning so like we have two classes and we will use one class over other class so like uh, check what is the definition first let us see so the process of using objects of the other classes as attribute value is called object composition okay so when you use objects of the other classes as attribute attribute means variable okay so variable or method sometime so the process of using object of other classes as attribute value is called object composition so the example you have seen i think of composition in the beginning we were uh, doing that So like we had, we were calling that function. Yes, check here. Like uh, what I am doing here. So this program we have seen. Just I am repeating. So class person was the first program we have seen in this chapter. In fact, last chapter uh, when we started uh, chapter uh, class class one. So the first program in the PPT was this, or in the book also class person. And here we were initializing uh, object self with variable name, date of birth, result, uh, address. okay then we had this functions so here we were returning name then name of the object 
then date of birth and then address okay so like uh, this we had and uh, what we did so p1 is one object p2 is other object we are printing this now check uh, so here this you can check so we are uh, using that my date class in the class person so this is called composition okay here we are using one class and uh, inside the other class so if you don't write this thing uh, suppose i don't write this thing so what will it do will it work so my date is not defined okay so what is saying uh, we are using this my date okay this is a class and we are using over this uh, day month year so uh, this is telling my date is not defined because we have not defined my what is my date here class is the person so for that you know what we were doing we were importing the path of that right the location of that program sys dot path dot append it will write location uh, so we have to see where is this program this is my date now so so it is not on desktop so i have to so inside that we have uh, the name is the my date okay this one so you can copy the location properties and this is location and from that location you are okay we are writing location and now how i can import so from the file name so file name i saved there is my date and uh, we are importing a class my class so sorry my date now so this was the class name uh, inside that program my date okay so now if i run it so it will not tell that my date is not defined so now we are using this class inside the class for so that is composition of the classes okay this is working now so okay first p1 p2 and here dov i have defined like this my date and this and we are using that dov here okay so you may remove it and you can use directly this okay i'm printing p3 so this is the result so this is composition and now after that we have topic inheritance okay so what is inheritance so first let us go through the ppt then i will show you the program so ppt consists of theories Okay, so first see what is the uh, uh, definition. So inheritance, so inheritance is an important feature of object-oriented programming that imparts ability to a class to inherit properties and behavior of the other class. Okay, so inheritance, uh, what will happen? So this is a feature of the object-oriented programming that imparts ability to a class. okay to inherit properties and behavior of the other class so here what we'll do we'll inherit the properties and behavior of the other class inside the uh, one class so class which inherits properties is called derived or derived class or sub class or child class so that class which inherits properties okay so this is called derived class sub class or child class so these are these are same word and you know, meaning are same and class from which properties are inherited is called base class or super class or parent class okay so we'll use this word derived and base so derived class that 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 is using the properties of the other class okay and the class from which the properties are inherited that is a base class okay so this word is to remember derived and base okay 
सो डिराइव क्लास में चाइल्ड क्लास बेस क्लास इज पेरेंट क्लास ओके ऑब्जेक्ट क्लास सो ऑब्जेक्ट क्लास इज द बेस क्लास ऑफ ऑल क्लासेस सो ऑब्जेक्ट वी वर डिफाइनिंग दैट ऑब्जेक्ट क्लास इज द बेस क्लास ऑफ ऑल क्लासेस and for example so let's see the example so like person is a base class of the employee so employee class you have not seen i think so i will show you so person class you have seen so we have the class person in the uh, in that we have you know like the object contains name date of birth and address okay so the notion of inheritance allows us to express the parent child relationship among the classes as shown in figure 1 so this is figure 1 so what is saying employee is a person okay every person may not be employee so person may be the owner also okay so maybe the president director somewhere like the owner but it not every person is employee but every employee is a person okay so employee is a child class and person will be a parent class or employee is derived class person is base class so we'll import the features of that person class into employee class okay so person class is already defined okay so parent class or base class are already defined okay inside that employee class we will be using the features of person class so a uh, class employee if i show you is it no is a person class that you have seen already ah this is employee class okay so uh, import says so we are calling two thing and location is changed so location is not on desktop okay so what we are doing we are importing that program name from my date we are importing my date class okay and from person so the name of the program is person and we are importing that class person we are defining a new class employee person now you check this is also a class so when we uh, use parent class is written like this this is a derived class and this is the parent class okay or you say base class so person is a base class and employee is a derived class okay so here we don't need to uh, define uh, in employee class we don't need to define name date of birth and address because we have already defined person so we'll import that okay so class employee we are defining next id this is assigned 1001 employee count initially is zero so define init this is the constructor of the object self with variable name date of birth address so these three variable we already had in person class now we are adding variables basic salary date of joining okay so uh, now how we will uh, use that base class here so we are using person dot double underscore init double underscore and self name date of birth address so this we had in class person okay already so, and now uh, rest thing like self dot id number is employee dot id number so id number uh, is so self is object okay so self dot id number is employee dot id uh, next id sorry employee dot next id so inside employee class the variable is next id that will be self dot id number so we are associating that object okay into the class employee self dot basic salary is basic salary then self dot date of joining is date of joining and employee dot next id is equal to plus 1 so whenever you will uh, take object as employee 
so id will be increased by one like for the first employee id will be 1001 for the next employee id will be 1002 hai na for the third employee id will be 1003 and like that and then employee dot employee count plus equal to 1 so will when you define when you take object as new employee so employee count will increase by 1 then we are defining these functions like get id self return self dot id number so these are accessor we have seen they are accessor and modifier so these are accessor okay this is accessor of id number this function is called accessor of id number next is uh, define get salary of object self and returning self dot basic salary okay this is accessor of the salary basic salary uh, next is def revise salary okay self comma new self there are two object here uh, two parameters are here self dot basic salary is equal to new salary so this uh, function you can use to update the salary okay so this is modifier no. so this can modify the salary of an employee next is def get joining date so return self dot date of joining this is accessor of date of joining then this we write to return output as a string okay so def str of self return person then str self so person dot okay so in, uh, from the class person we'll print that like uh, name date of birth address and then id so id we have uh, taken here and then a uh, salary okay and there are date of joining and all that okay and now we are defining lt so what is meaning of lt can anyone tell what is the full form of lt less than yes less than right so it is less than so what we are checking uh this is function to check less than over two objects so one object is self other object is other so you can write self one self two so here is self is one object, other is other object. There are two objects and we will be checking that uh, ID of the self object is less than the ID of the other object. So this function will be used to check. Okay. And then uh, def, this is delete. So this is destructor of the object. So in case we want to delete some object, so we'll use that. So person dot double underscore delete of self employee dot employee count decreased by one so whenever you will uh, delete any person okay or any uh, employee you say because every employee is a person so you delete any employee so employee count will get decreased by one now like here, you can see here person three we have defined this among my date so we are uh, taking this importing that class my date here okay it is one as well so print p3 then employee one so employee one we have this so this you may remove here uh, this obviously it will do but here we are uh, defining employee one so employee one so employee class i'm importing now what are the variables here in employee so variables were self name uh, self is object so name date of birth address basic salary date of joining so one two three four five okay five variables are there so name date of birth address basic salary date of joining okay so now uh, if you print it so uh, i will run it in ideally check. Okay, check somewhere we have mistake, I think here. I think I did some mistake, one minute. In copying.
okay so now you can check here uh this thing are getting printed due to uh, these are available already in the class person i think that's why okay so here it should print only rahman okay rahman my date and all but what we are getting here uh, we are also getting that uh, from rahman is fine so this thing if you don't want to get printed so from that class you have imported you remove all that objects okay so which class we have imported we have imported my date we have imported person so Uh, let us go there and remove that okay so in the person class if you check so i have this variable a b c 12 december all this so and my date i have imported so here objects my date okay that will work so now let's uh, run it again okay so now we can see the output okay so if i run it so name rahman date of birth this address mumbai uh, id this salary Ninety thousand and date of joining this, and uh, the first one is for. So here we were asking them. Employment printed. That was output for that name. Uh, date of birth, place, basic salary, date of joining, then employee dot employee count. So we are counting the number of employee. So we have to find only one, so that is the counting one, and then deleted employee one. So now employee count become zero because it was one. Okay, you can define other also. So this is the pro this is the program employee. Okay, so here employee is the derived class of that class person. so that it was talking about okay employee and person so employee is a derived class and person is a base class so person is a base class of employee that is example of inheritance okay so we inherit the property of person class into employee class so type of inheritance so there are different type of inheritance based on how base classes and derived classes are defined okay so there are different types of inheritance so these types are given below so first one is single inheritance multiple inheritance uh, hierarchical inheritance and then multiple inheritance so it was it was multi level sorry okay so single inheritance multi level inheritance and hierarchical hierarchical inheritance and then multiple inheritance there are four type of inheritance okay so what is first one Uh, what is single inheritance okay so when inheritance involves a derived class that derives its properties from a single base class okay there is only one base class as shown in figure 1 so it was person and employee figure 1 was employee person so uh, person is a single so here employee is using only one base class okay that is person so that's why it will be single inheritance so whenever inheritance involves a derived class that derives its properties from a single base class okay so single inheritance means it has a single base class so that will be single inheritance and uh, syntax will be class so class you know to define a class derived class name like we had employee and base class name so it was person and body of the derived class so you have already seen the program so this was the one of the program where employee this class is the derived class and person is a base class so this is example of single inheritance okay so example class employee and person body of the class you have seen so now we have all the data and methods okay 
so all the data and method attributes defined in the base class like we had employee uh, we had person class na no? person class is a base class so all the data and method attributes defined in the base class become available to the derived class so all the data and method so like all the functions you define in person class or all the data you have that will be available to the employee class also and you, know? you don't have to write it again uh, when an object of a derived class makes a call to a method that is also defined in the base class so now suppose uh, you define you know when an object of a derived class make a call to a method so some function you have that is inside derived class as well as base class so which one will be preferred and by the python so you can see the answer here so when suppose a function and are available in the derived class as well as base class and they are doing suppose different things so what will it do python invokes the method of derived class so python will invoke the method of derived class so thus the derived class methods override the base class method and this process is known as method overriding okay so what is saying when an object of a derived class makes a call to a method that is also defined the base class okay so method is available at both the places so python invokes the method of derived class okay and the derived class method override the base class method and this process is called overriding now we have a uh, some way to write so we have seen the subclass and superclass so we had here a uh, subclass is derived class and superclass is uh, base class huh? so base class is also called superclass so that is actually uh, here uh, using super function for accessing a method of a base class so you can access a method of a base class using this super function okay so here like super derived class name so like uh, i will continue with the same example employee and person so employee was derived class and person was base class so you can write super derived class name we had employee and self you can write the person like we had is one uh, employee one okay so this is a object employee one so you may use this command okay super employee and then uh, employee one dot double underscore init double underscore parameters of base class so which method you want to access like you want to access name date of birth address so you can write there okay so name comma date of birth comma address you can write or other way super dot this init and then parameters of the base class so that is same name date of birth and address that was in the person class okay next is scope rule so scope rule we're saying uh, to access an instance attribute python will first look it in the instance namespace so instance space objects namespace then in the class namespace and then in the super class namespace recursively going up in the hierarchy so this will discuss later on first i will show you one program uh, supporting this theory so look at this program so i will ask the output so i will say you just look carefully suppose i do some mistake so that okay so i will ask the output now check so what we are doing first i will explain the program then i will ask you the what will be the output so class name we are defining here is uh, class a so name of the class we have defined a okay in class a z is assigned value 30 and uh, defining init this is a uh, constructor of the object self 
self dot x is two, self dot y is ten, self dot w is hundred. So like uh, with the object self, the value of x is two, y is ten, and w is hundred. Now we are defining so the string. So we'll return it w and the value of w x. And this is a string form value of x, then y value of y, then z value of z. Okay. This is the class A. Now we are defining class B, that is derived class of A. So A is a base class or parent class or super class. B is derived class, child class or sub class. And any one you can say. So B is sub class of A. Sub class of A. Okay. So here inside B, we are defining, uh, giving x value four and y value twenty. And uh, here y has y was ten, x is twenty. Now defining that. Uh, I and I T self, so we are actually associating that class A. Okay, let B. So we are calling the properties of class A into that class. So A dot I and I T self, self dot X is six, and self dot V is fifty. Okay. So V has value sixty and X is six. So check here was X two. Okay. Here x is four and here x is six. Now defining a string form, so we'll output a dot str self. So like uh, it will call the string function of that a class. So that will this w x y z. Okay. So which meaning this? They will call w x y z and then v. One more. Now we are printing. So this you delete as of now. So object one, that is object one is a class a. We are calling an object b, this b class. Okay, parameters are default parameters are there. We have already defined value at x y z, so that will be taken. Printing object one, printing object two. Okay. So first, I will run this program. So no, it will not give you error now. Okay. Let me do this. Where you can see better, I think. Uh, this is a whole program, okay? One minute. So. Okay, so whom to ask? A uh, first look program carefully. Okay, so I will ask the output. So you first uh, look carefully. So we have what? Uh, we are we have two print set. One is print this. So this print will do what? And other print is this. So what will be output corresponding to print one? So we are printing object one, and object one is class A. So we'll go into class A first, okay? So here x is two, y is ten, w is hundred, and z is thirty. So who will tell? Okay. Okay, so let's start. I will start from the middle today. Yes, Ayush, are you here? Ayush Senapati. Yes, sir. So, if I run this program, so what do you think? First print will print what? First print this one. So what is the output of this first print? So first print will do what? This print, this print. <coughs> so 
so we are printing object one you can try you may tell wrong answer no problem and object one is this class a and default parameters are there na x y z w so this thing we write to get output okay so so here i think okay so what i'm asking uh, this we write to print so you can guess you can guess or you can tell directly what do you think what will be the output no idea no sir at least you try see so what we are doing uh, you check here so what we are doing so uh, actually in class a uh, we are returning value of w first okay so tell me what is the value of w in class 1 w is equal to what in class a you see in class a is this Yes, sir. Hundred. Hundred. So W is hundred. Next, it will print uh, X. 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 What is X? X so is two. X in the same row. It will print two. What is Y? Y is ten. Y is ten. And what is Z? So Z is thirty. Z is thirty. This is the output. The so first print will do this. So I have written in column. It will not be like that. In uh, output will be hundred. Yeah. Then X. The comma. So yes. Yeah. And like that comma because we have written like that so here i have no space that's why i written like that so w x and that okay correct i think it is fine so i will run it and you will see okay uh, for the second output so madhusmita are you here aditya kumar aditya kumar samal लिप्सिता यस सर ओके सो कैन यू टेल मी आउटपुट ऑफ सेकंड सेकंड प्रिंट सो आउटपुट ऑफ सेकंड प्रिंट सो सेकंड प्रिंट इज व्हाट प्रिंटिंग ऑब्जेक्ट टू वी आर प्रिंटिंग ऑब्जेक्ट टू सो इट वाज ऑब्जेक्ट वन and object 2 so object 2 is here uh, object 2 this class b so inside class b now you see so uh, do you remember the order so what it said look here uh, scope rule read a scope rule what is saying to access an instance attribute python will first look it in the instance namespace instance means that object's namespace then in the class namespace and then in the super class namespace recursively going up in the hierarchy so wherever it will find it will stop searching okay so check again uh, we are doing what returning a this so a will returning in this way it will only return so now object 2 will return what let me write here in the top so object 2 tell me what is the value of w in Class the hundred. So W actually inside class B there is no W, so it will take the same from the class A. Yes. What will be X? 
x is six. So x here is inside that object. We have six. Yes. And then uh, after x, we will ask you y. What is y? Twenty. So y inside that function, you will see first. Then inside that object, the twenty. Okay. Next after y, ask you z. Z is thirty. So z is thirty. So okay, z is thirty. So no where z is defined. Yes. So only one defined. So it will take that. Okay. Now after z, so this was in object one. So this you did this thing. Now you also also returning v. So what is value of v? Fifty. So v we are taking fifty. That is all. Okay. So let me just run the program. <clears throat> so I will remove the rest thing. How to do it there? So we'll match with that thing. So we have used this uh, derived class A and B. Sorry, class B derived class and A is the base class. Check is it correct? Uh, so now uh, let's match whether I have. A, so in object one, hundred, two, ten, thirty. That is fine. In ob object one, okay. In object one, we had this, okay. So object one is correct, and object two have we decided correct? W hundred, x six, y ten. Check y is ten, but you have told y is twenty. So let's first check. Z is thirty, z is thirty, and v is fifty, v is fifty. So y is wrong. Okay. So first go to the program now. So in the output y is ten in both, is it? Yes, and. Uh, Okay, so let's go to the program. Check. So y is twenty here. Okay, inside B. But what we are doing here? A dot string self, right? So we are printing output from the class A. Okay, let me just check. Yes. So uh, if Y was not defined in A, then it will take that. Okay. So are you getting? You can check. So here the output we have is this ten. So this way you can do. Or what if we write in a similar way? Suppose I just copy it. So let me just go there. So here we run. So first we run it. This output: hundred two ten thirty and hundred six ten thirty fifty. And now instead of this, so we had this right? A dot double underscore str self. So we were calling the output of object A only. Uh, class A only, but instead of this, if you write like this explicitly, so so I'm writing the program again here. So I will do what modification? Uh, instead of writing this, uh, I will remove that. So delete that, and you write in a similar way like you have here. Okay.
and the add here okay so now what we are asking So if I run it, what will happen? Will tell. So now uh, object one will print the same thing. So W we have a uh, hundred, X we have two. Okay. So what I'm saying. Uh, look this program. And what I'm saying. Here instead of there were a dot double underscore str of self. Okay, now we change that. So what will be output in that case? So we will tell. So next, Isan. So Isan are you here? Yes, sir. Hmm. So you can try. It. So output object one will give same output. Okay. One minute. तुम पहले mute कर लो. हाँ. अभी देखो object one will do what? W X Y Z. So object one जो होगा like W is here hundred, X is two, Y is ten and Z is thirty. Uh, okay. And now here. Now In the last program, we had here a dot double underscore str double underscore of self. So we are writing the same thing. That's why y was ten. Now, what is w? Now you tell, Isan. In class B, what is y w? So first, it will search inside that object, then in that function uh, class, then in class, then in the super class. and yeah, recursively okay so you are writing in okay w is 100 mm -hmm. so uh, w here is 100 so w here is 100 because That we extract from super class x. So देखो यहाँ x six है, यहाँ four है और यहाँ पे two है. तो कौन सा वाला होगा? तो first it will access what? बताओ. So यहाँ पे x की value क्या होगी? ये six होगी या four होगी या two होगी? Six होगी. Six है ना? Because it will access first here, then in the class, so first inside object, then है ना इफ इट नॉट फाइंड इन ऑब्जेक्ट देन इट विल फाइंड इन क्लास एंड देन इन सुपर क्लास सो सिक्स एंड वाई हेयर वाई इट इज नॉट डिफाइंड इन सेल्फ सो हेयर इट इज डिफाइंड सो नाउ इट विल डू ट्वेंटी इन द लास्ट इन लास्ट टाइम इट वॉज टेन है ना इफ यू नोटिस इन ऑब्जेक्ट टू इट सेल्फ वाई वॉज टेन इन बोथ बट हेयर इट विल बी ट्वेंटी नाउ बिकॉज ओके बिकॉज वाई इज a uh, here 20 inside class b and z uh, z here is not defined so this z will be taken 30 and v here so v v will be uh, v is defined here 50 so 50 like this 100 6 20 30 50 it should be output so okay let's check so yahan ke galti kar diya so yahan mein likhna padega wo slash ओके ओ यहाँ फिर से टेन ही दे रहा है समथिंग इज रॉन्ग इज इट बट इट्स शुड गिव ट्वेंटी ना सो वी हैव टू चेक
okay so object will not have this but here we have inside b okay so if we have to find here then it will exist okay self dot y is suppose 20 now it will access okay so in that case it will access so what was in the ppt so it was saying to access an instance attribute so object and a variable so python will first look it in the instance namespace then in the class namespace then in the super class namespace recursively going up in the hierarchy okay so this is inside uh, object namespace okay okay so you also check it uh, like uh, this is fine when we define here but if we remove from here so y is 20 but here it will print 10 is it yeah 10 10 so why it is doing like that uh, because does anyone tell Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, you also run the program, so I think uh, I will check it. If something is wrong here okay time is also up so i will take the attendance So we'll continue from here in the next class, okay? So uh, from here I will continue in the next class and then we'll continue with this. Class. So I will take attendance now and we'll continue with this in next class. Okay, till then you also write this program. So I would say uh, you all please write this program so that until then I'm taking attendance. Okay, so everyone please write this program and check. So Ravi Raj, present sir. Uh, Sejal, Sejal. Present sir. Sabya Sachi. Monica. Present sir. Soumya Saurav. Present sir. Abdullah. Present sir. Abhipsa. Sorry, Abhilipsa. Aditya Narayan. Present sir. Pratiksha. Present, sir. Sadhana Sen. Present, sir. Satya Subdarsi. Present, sir. Priyajit. 
अभिषेक प्रेजेंट सर प्रसन्नजीत प्रेजेंट सर हर्षवर्धन यस सर स्वस्तिक यस सर विवेक प्रेजेंट सर सुमित प्रेजेंट सर सौमेंद्र प्रेजेंट सर उज्ज्वल उज्ज्वल दास आयुष्मान प्रेजेंट सर बसंत यस सर ससांक यस सर सीजल प्रेजेंट सर स्वप्ना श्री प्रेजेंट सर कृति सर स्वयं सार्थक अच्छा सॉरी स्वयं सार्थक यस प्रेजेंट सर प्रेजेंट सर प्रेजेंट सर अनिकेत सौभाग्य शंकर यस सर आकाश प्रेजेंट सर रिशी प्रेजेंट सर श्रीधा आकाश इज प्रेजेंट सर हाँ आकाश प्रेजेंट हो गया रिशी प्रेजेंट है श्रीधा यस सर अमिताभ प्रेजेंट सर आदित्य प्रेजेंट सर अभिषेक देन अभिषेक के बाद ईशान प्रेजेंट है ओके ऑलरेडी लिपसिता प्रेजेंट है आदित्य कुमार सामल आदित्य है मधुस्मिता आयुष सेनापति प्रेजेंट है ओके मधुमुख पंकज कुमार प्रेजेंट सर संदीप सिंह प्रेजेंट सर कुमार चंद्रशेखर प्रेजेंट सर सुमित कुमार सर प्रियांबदा प्रियांबदा प्रेजेंट सर तन्मय प्रेजेंट सर आदित्य प्रेजेंट सर अनिकेत प्रेजेंट सर अभिषेक प्रेजेंट सर अनुराग सौरभ वैष्णवी प्रेजेंट सर शिवम प्रेजेंट सर अश्वनी सुभाजीत संग्राम हाँ संग्राम प्रेजेंट सर प्रेजेंट हर्षिता प्रेजेंट सर ओके सो विल कंटिन्यू दिस यू कैन आल्सो डू दिस सो इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास आई विल स्टार्ट विद दिस स्कोप रूल and then you are like okay thank you everyone so we'll meet in next class